I've sloped um, and I don't have any figures yet to say whether that's going to give me um, enough storage perhaps to deal with you know five cool days or you know is there a way no, for us to just the, readily measure? The, the way you can work out how much you require you can take the heat capacity of water yep. so it's 4100 um, joules per degree mm -hmm. and then work out what your temperature difference is and how many litres of water you have. And so, <coughs> in that, you can work out exactly how much heat or cool you can store in a volume of water. And I suppose the question is kind of more, not so much the exact figure, but what are our orders of magnitude that we're talking about? Because, you know, Your, your 25,000 litres should be enough. Like, those guys are doing 130,000 litres for quite a significant building. building. So if you're doing a small project, like, and that's not a very large water tank, 25,000 litres, yeah. really. Um, so if you're going to do that, you'd want to probably bury it and put decent insulation around the tank. Um, and yeah. yeah. What would you... Yeah, I'm sorry, let someone else have a go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Thank you. laughs> in, looking at Sydney and Melbourne, you're talking typically uh, three months you want heating and six months you want cooling, let's say. Um, if you're just talking about the paint thing without going into the water cooling, um, how, how, is there any way to to handle this? That uh, you, you, you're really maybe increasing your heat load yeah. during yeah. the winter because you've got the... Yeah, the, that's uh, the thing we have to look at for different areas is what you're heating, for residential particularly, you're, you're, going to, you're very interested in what your heating is. In a lot of commercial things, the internal electrical heating load is significant enough that it outweighs the solar anyway. So uh, the internal heat from the lights and computers, machinery, means that you're going to need cooling all year round. But residential ones, it's very different. You will have sometimes the year when your heating costs are going to go up. Uh, yeah, uh, have you made any tests on uh, colour bomb? The latest colour bomb? The one, the 77%. No, I'm talking to a guy the other week and hopefully I'm getting a sample of it. Right, okay. Yeah, if there's, we can do the calculations on it to work out exactly what it is. Their emittance is about 0.85 because it's a PVDF coating. Um, so it'll be the same as most other coatings like that are 0.75, uh, 0.85 emittance. Yeah. And they, they're claiming it's a 77% reflectant. So with that, you can work out exactly how it's going to perform in comparison. Uh, how, how long has this, has this been on the market? The, the, the Colourbond the, the one, it was about three months ago or something, they sent out a brochure saying it's available. It may have been available slightly before is then. This, is this all, the, is this, the, the, this Colourbond uh, now entirely all over the entire range? Or just no, it's, it's so they cool call it well. Coolmax. It's a um, special one. I, it's, it was Coolmax White something. Um, yeah. there, there are other top of the line. The one before that that was their top was 66% reflective, which was their um, white mist. But then they brought out this newer one, which is better. The, the paints, though, um, paints can get a lot higher. They're, yeah. they're high. Paints are available and they can get higher than because uh, color bonds are quite nine. restricted because they need to be able to have a coating that can go through their forming process after they painted it. They could paint it the other way around, but because they need to have a PVDF that can bend, they haven't managed to get up higher. I suspect they can get there, but they so haven't. <laughs> sorry, I just want to know what the Google search terms are for that kind of um, product. Because um, there's a product called like Slack Blast on. There's a local company called Skycool. Um, if you look at um, coolroofs.org, which is a California mm -hmm. um, one, so they have a list supplies. of all different paint suppliers that have a high reflectance and high emissions. Okay, um, you'll find coloured ones too. There's a company take, importing in South Australia now. I've got up there. I forget the stuff to see. And there's a couple of other coloured paints of those. Now but but for a good list of them is Cool Roof. They don't have all of them that you can get in Australia, but because most of the ones we get are imported anyway, they'll have the list. Well, you might be interested to know. Would you like to order? Yeah, I think it was called Solar Guard. Could I test it? Yeah. Um, Do you like to see? And. Um, it had a 95% reflectance. 95%? Reflectance. That, would have been, that would have been a visible reflectance, not a solar reflectance. Not a solar. No, no. no you might be aware that Gillux had just released uh, a new range of paints. I was wondering yeah. whether that's still available. Yeah. 
I've, I've seen, when I was at Bunnings recently, I saw Solar Guard there. I haven't seen, I, I've never seen a thing that said that it was 95%. Oh, I, years, I, I always wondered how long it would no, have the, best we've, the best we've seen, for, uh, including from some major paint developers overseas, is, is it's about 88 to 90. What, what's Dulux uh, got? Look, I was at a green building function about two months ago, and Dulux were there espousing the virtues of their new paint range. So they're just releasing a new one where you can actually get it in the colours. But depending on what colour it is, red was particularly bad. Hmm. It yeah, it depends on the pigment. Though. So, yeah, it depends on the pigment thing. So they've just released a new one. Insil something or other, I recall, yes. is what it is. Oh, there's insul cool now. They've got to be very they careful. They have insulating beads yeah. as well. No, no, not, not, not insul cool. Not that's, in a, that's a problem paint, that one. Not insul clad, because that's got the beads in it. Yeah. This, huh? is, this is Dulux's thing, which is quite different from right. the yeah. So, yeah, the <coughs> coloured solar reflectives use various tricks to get both the... They basically absorb some... Have a pigment only absorbs in a narrow range somewhere in the visible, and maybe it's in a little bit, but basically they're transmitting in the infrared, so the rest of the paint binder... Oh, sorry, they you know, the... Where TI do whatever reflects in the infrared. The other type we developed early on with BASF involved was specially paint for cars and things, which had a uh, uh, metal flakes with very thin layers of silicon dioxide or iron oxide on them. And they, you could change the colour. In fact, if you have two layers, you could actually get very sexy effects as the angle of incidence changes. But um, that's a very expensive paint, so these, these are the ones with. Uh, special pigments uh, are becoming widely available now. So you can get colour. The, the question I have there on the white paints, how long do they maintain that? Um, the, what, with the Cool Roof um, website has the listing of the initial colour and then the three year colour oh. with um, responses on them. After three years they, they're pretty sure most of them are pretty much stabilised on what's oh, going on. What's that website? Um, CoolRoof.org these American. It's the Californian website. Because they, they've, they've put in, they've basically made rules saying you have to have white roofs. <laughs> so you have, there's minimum performance on what you have to have, which is what would be great if Australia started. Yeah. Um, one or two more questions. Yeah. There's one this here this and one, one here. Okay. Could I ask, if you've got a white roof and you wish to cool that in the evening, after you've reflected as much heat as you can during the daytime, but now you want to cool it, does that white reflect back inside the building when the heat tries to escape no, through it? Because it's reflective in the solar wavelength, so up to two and a half microns it's reflecting, right. but from two and a half microns up, it's really good absorber, so it can, so, so it can emit very well. That's why it you behaves optically quite So different. when you change the, ultra, change the ultraviolet into infrared, which is now trying to escape yeah, out it can of escape night, through. it's good. Yeah, it's good. So during the daytime, it, it also achieves a lower maximum temperature because it's got a higher emittance, right. and at night it can still emit. There's, a, a, so a, 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 there's an index of paint companies use called an SRI, which is a, because they like single numbers, which involves both solar reflectance and the emittance. We prefer to work with both because we have exact models, but the, the, this, this SRI is a simple formula that puts both the solar reflectance at, at... The solar reflectance dominates, but what we're finding in Angus's work and mine and others is that uh, you can actually pump the internal heat gains if you design your roof properly with but, some of these... But coatings. the problem is I've got wintertime freezing, so now yeah. what the hell do I do now? I've got well, to somehow turn it back Well, well there some, night, right? there's some other tricks but with the roof. But that's when you also have a... That's because you don't, need, because you don't need a very large area of solar collector panels to actually absorb enough hot water. You can heat hot water and then have hydraulic pumping through your floor to maintain the heat during that winter okay. time. Yeah. You. So you can your, your, your optimum R value also shifts. It depends. So yeah, if we, 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 there's ways of designing that depending on what your heat and cool load balances are. Right. So, Thank you. So if you have a heat, combined heat and, heating and cooling system where you're using hydraulic floor, then you can pump either hot or cold through it. Right. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, coming back to your calculation using the heat capacity for the storage, uh, the, what storage volume you need for the, the, for the water. But that doesn't take account of the losses that are involved in the system. So there's, uh, they depend very much on the size of the building and the size of the installation yeah. involved. And I'd imagine they're going to be 50% at least, even in a, a building such as the Tate building. But with small buildings, they're going to be much bigger. Is there a sort of rule of thumb way of um, estimating what those... So it depends where the losses are. are you, well, as, as you go if the, the losses are internally, yeah, they're not really losses because you're contributing... That's true. So, so it's only losses well, between the tank and the building that are really... With small 
Um, well, the other thing is with a small building, your surface area of your roof to walls, the walls are going quite significantly higher as a percentage of it. Okay, that's true. Whereas once you go to larger buildings, you don't have that problem as much. So that's why a lot of this stuff concentrates on industrial scale yes. things because the solar load from the roof is a lot more on the side. Mm. Another thing um, you could, uh, where we'd like to see developments, and there's some going on, is in phase change materials. So you can pump down phase change materials with these systems as well, and that, that would be a big gain. Well, that's if you want to move, particularly that would be useful if you want to move towards um, uh, seasonal. Yes, so yes. That, That's really where you need to go. But, of course, here it's talking about uh, a day, night, or a few days. Mm. Okay, okay. But it gets complicated. So yeah, 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 but if, if your storage yeah. is... Oh, if, you, if your storage is within the building envelope or underneath it, mm. then any losses... A lot of the losses are going to be going back into the buildings to help you out. Is really any losses that are between or exchanges between your hot and cold yeah. reservoirs? That can yeah, yeah. Air, air exchanges. That's, that's why you want to separate. separate. The one thing we haven't touched on here is the big topic in its own right in the urban heat island is these cool roofs actually cool the environment. Yes, yes, they do. And and this is this I, I hint at that, but it's it's a big area we'd love to do more research on. But it, it's, there's substantial projects and. Some of Angus's models, is we can actually predict some of the effects now. For instance, you can actually the walls are actually the, the, the vertical walls can actually be cooler in the day and, and at night uh, than they would normally be. And so, we, that, but the air ex it depends where your air exchange units are. There's a whole heap of things, as you say, it's complicated, which have yet. But we know there are additional gains over and above what we predict in our models. That's what I said. There was remember I said that we exceeded.